Hello, welcome to this episode of Walden Wall Inks. Today I'm going to talk about how I start working out all the ruler work, all the template work, all the ruler work. So, yeah. So here we go. I'm using a uh, thicker repeater graph, the 0.5, to do the holding line of these straps. That's the uh, the brown repeater graph pin that I'm using right here. It gives a little bit of a thicker line. Just taking all the outlines of the straps first. A little bit off screen here. See, so even when I'm making with the repeater graph, I'm still thinking about line weights. So I'm put putting away the 0.5 repeater graph pin, and I'm gonna grab the 0.3 repeater graph pin. That's the yellow one here. 0.3. This gives a thinner line, so you can start inking the insides of the objects. Notice that this line is a little bit thinner than the other pin I was using. zoom the camera in so you can get a closer look. Now I'm using uh, uh, templates. Right here I'm creating, uh, the, you know, inking the strap and then I'm also creating a halo for later. Just an outline uh, where there's going to be a black area surrounding halo line. Because I don't want that black to uh, go into the strap so I'm creating a halo on the left. Okay, now I'm gonna start inking the belt over here. Now, if you look at the belt, you notice that the pencil, he drew the black on the abs going into the black on the belt. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate the belt by adding a halo. So right here, there's gonna be another line that separates the two black areas. Otherwise, when you're inking uh, the black on the belt and the black on the abs, they're gonna mesh together. It's just gonna be one big blob. So what I do is I'll just create a halo there to separate it. Halo is two lines that has a, a white in between that separates the, the two blacks. And we continue on with the, the shin guards, uh, Cyclops uh, shin guards. This is on X. On the top, I created Halo, it's just like what I did there, and all, as well as the bottom. You see those two lines? And then since I have two lines on the left, I may as well do two lines on the right too, even though I didn't need that Halo. As I'm using these the templates, you'll notice that I I can find the correct oval or the angle right away. In the beginning, it took me a while to uh, get used to the template, but once you use it for for as long as I have, you know which size to use right away. It becomes pretty pretty quick. And then as I'm making, I'm also using my left hand to uh, move the template around. Uh, when we get to the, the tracks of the shoes that I'm going to ink later, you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, now look at the shoes. There's uh, these tracks, tracks over there. First I'll ink the inside and then I'll ink the outside. And then as you notice, I'm using my left hand to shift the template around. That way I can move, move that, uh, that dip bottom and top and bottom and top. Well, we'll do that, do that again right here. The inside line and then the traction of the shoes. Shifting with my left hand. It's a slight shift with my left hand moving the template. And then I'm using the template to connect the two different curves. Make sure you find the right uh, template, uh, the right angle to connect this smoothly. Add a halo line over there. Now here's Cyclops logo. The logo is underneath that optic blast and some of the energy flows there. So I'm gonna find the right angle and then make sure you go use that oval all the way across. Shift it a bit. This way your your oval flows better in between that uh, that cross over there. And here's the collar I'm making. And 
right here I'll eat the, uh, the insides of the X logo again make sure that line flows underneath uh, flows correctly yeah, I'm using a bit of white out because uh, on the left side of the collar there was a uh, some there was no line in between the logo and the collar so I used the white out to uh, separate that right there I, I broke up some of the lines on a uh, white queen's uh, uh, outfit you want the holding line, the outside line, to be more noticeable than the inside lines. And here I'm still using the point three. Uh, when I wanted to go thicker, I'll just go back over the same lines to make it thicker. You, you can always go back and use the, uh, the point five, but since I have that in hand, I might as well just go back over twice to make that line a little bit thicker. Now I'm going to do these, uh, this this rope on this guy's uh, cloak. And I use a circle template to do all the circles first. And then move back over to my uh, oval template to do the, the rope over there. Okay. I'll use a partial template to do the partial side of the oval. And then I'll shift it around and then I'll find the correct uh, size and then ink that in. This way I get a nice smooth flow. I've seen a lot of other inkers where they're doing that and some of, this, some of the ropes are doing that. It's all wobbly. I like it to be perfect. And then now I'm inking the lines underneath behind the rope. Again, you want those lines to flow consistently. So it doesn't, so one line doesn't look higher than the other line flowing underneath. You, when you do it this way, it keeps things uh, much more accurate. Okay, after that, I'm going to ink some of the, uh, the, the patterns on uh, some of these characters' outfit. Using the template, I can, I can always freehand this, but with, with logos and patterns and straight edge style stuff, I like using a ruler and template. Now here's the collar. Now I'm not going to find one over. I'm just going to use a partial over here, shift the page, use a partial over oval on another area, shift the page again, look for the right template and then ink that partial oval and then onwards to the rest of the, uh, the collar. <clears throat> and then the, the, the X logo on his uh, outfit. Okay, and then here's um, the angel's Collar. His collar is not round, it's more like a V, v shape. So I'm gonna look for a different template and take that in, shifting it around. There's that, and here's Wolverine, Wolverine's collar. Sometimes the uh, pencils is a little bit off, so I'll, I'll find the right angle. Now, you notice I add a dot there uh, because uh, the line wasn't complete. I added a dot there to give it more of a thick to thin. Uh, when you're adding a dot, the reader who's looking at it, their mind will complete that oval for you. So sometimes I'll just add a dot as opposed to giving it a really thin line weight. Now I'm making uh, the angel Warren Washington's uh, wing, his wings. Again, you want all the lines to flow nicely behind all that hair. So right here, I'm still using a template, making all those little fighter lines. Sometimes using a free using a template, I'll freehand things in there, and I'll use the template to block things up. And here's all the line work on this page, uh, everything that I have done. Is, so faces, and then also all the uh, template work. And there you have it, all the ruler work and template work with a repeatograph technical pin size 0.5 and 0.3. Thanks for watching this episode of Voldemort Inks. Now, if you like this video, click like. If there's a comment, comment down below. I'll answer all of your questions and don't forget to subscribe. And uh, if, so this issue is already out in stores, X-Men Blue, go take a look. And if you have any questions, subscribe. Until next time, be good.